It is the end of an era on the Hill. After two decades, Democratic Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi, the first female speaker in U.S. history, has announced that she is not going to seek re-election to the post. For me, the hours come for a new generation to lead the Democratic caucus that I so deeply respect. And I'm grateful that so many are ready and willing to shoulder this awesome responsibility. Well, Pelosi's move comes as a new Republican leadership team prepares to take control of the House. As we've said, she is the first female speaker in history. Pelosi, though, says she'll become a backbencher now, remain in Congress, and advise the new Democratic team uh, that is taking shape. We want to bring in our political panel for you this morning. Scott Bolden is a Democratic strategist and former chairman of D.C.'s Democratic Party. Latoya Congolo is a Republican strategist and former candidate for Maryland's House of Delegates. It's uh, good to have you both, Latoya, Scott. I, I want to start Thank with you. Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> Obviously, she is an historic person mm -hmm. in uh, a lot of regards, being the first female speaker in history. Mm -hmm. But what does she represent as far as a loss to the Democrats, having been able to manage them through ups and downs over her term as speaker? Mm -hmm. Me? Yeah. OK. <laughs> uh, she is a leader of consequence. Uh, she's not going to be a backbencher. Uh, she is going to be there. Uh, she'll still be in Congress, and she'll be, still be given advice and counsel. And Hakeem Jeffries, who's going to be the Democratic leader, is going to rely on her, is very close to her, as long as the other 80-year-old uh, leadership that is stepping down from the uh, Democratic, Democrats in the House right now. Well, Latoya, what can they learn in the Republican Party from Speaker Pelosi? Because she was able to manage victories with, with a slight majority herself. Mm -hmm. Republicans have had a lot of infighting going on right mm -hmm. now, and it's going on right now, even some you know, consternation about who should be in this leadership mm -hmm. team. Well, I think that um, because of the decades that she spent in leadership, I think that she's brought some strengths. I think that um, we've, we can learn from uh, what Nancy has done over the years. But I do think that this is an opportunity for new leadership and to bring a balanced perspective um, to the House and Congress. I got to ask you, Republicans came out this week and held a news conference with the incoming chairman of the House Oversight Committee, Jim Comer, Republican out of Kentucky. What he talked about was not the economy, mm -hmm. was about investigating Hunter Biden. Mm -hmm. Now, Republicans had said throughout the fall campaign that they wanted to focus on the economy. The first big press conference this week was not about the economy, it was about Hunter Biden. Mm -hmm. Are Republicans going to follow through on what they said they wanted to concentrate with the economy, or are we going to hear nothing but Hunter Biden over the next two years? I think that we will at this point, I mean, I'm from Delaware, so I know a mm -hmm. lot about the Biden uh, family, and it's going to be a hot topic at Thanksgiving, but <laughs> I think that um, the Republican Party is our platform and what we stand for and what we want to see is a stronger economy. We want to see parental involvement. We are still very committed to what we, what our foundation and what we want to see moving forward for America. But Scott, is that going to be a hot topic? Because when I hear people talk, they talk, they're talking about how much things cost at the grocery store. It is the height of hypocrisy on the Republican Party. If you ran and lost in the midterms, saying this is the inflation, this is about economy and gas prices, and then when you take control of the House and you, the first press conference you say is we're going to go after Hunter Biden, then you're playing to your base, not playing to what's best for America. And it's right there in black and white and in living color when the Republicans finally do take control and they are going to take control mm -hmm. out of the box what are we going to see are we going to see it, proposals for lowering inflation proposals for getting spending in check the kinds of things that the lesson coming out of election day was that people cared about those things mm -hmm. and if Republicans who spoke about those things did better than those who remain on the far right side wing of the party extremism. Absolutely. I, again, we are very committed to making sure that our families are, are um, able to uh, feed themselves or feed their children. We're committed to making sure that education is strong and all of our children are receiving quality education and parents are involved and that the economy is strong. Inflation is an issue and it's still number one for the Republican Party. All right. What happened with the Republican Party this week was that it got its full, first full-fledged candidate for the presidency in 2024 <laughs> when mm -hmm. Donald Trump announced mm -hmm. that he was going to run for the third time now. Um, this did not get the coverage, I think, that we saw when Trump's previous right. runs. 
Why is that? Is there Trump fatigue out there right now? The, all of the things that were the fallout from the insurrection, just the, the, the withering amount of attention that the man has had for the last eight years, Scott. Did mm -hmm. you detect a difference this time? Well, there's a huge difference. Uh, when he first ran and he came down the steps with his racist comments and remarks, we didn't know what the package was going to be completely because we hadn't had four years of Donald Trump. Now with this announcement, with the January 6th investigations and with everything else that's going on with Donald Trump in regard to DOJ's investigations of the documents, January 6th and what have you, we know what, he, what the package is and it's not pretty. He's been rejected by the, by the, the, the American people when he ran the last time. Uh, he's running again, not so much because he really cares about this American community, but he, yeah. but he's trying to head off the DOJ Look, investigation. Latoya, I would say that one of the more interesting parts about Trump's announcement, though, has been what's been going on in the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. You know, Segment's kind of pulling back from, from jumping in his boat right away. People talking about Ron DeSantis, obviously the Vice President, Mike yeah. Pence has been out mm -hmm. there. What's going on internally in your party as far as how you're dealing with this Trump announcement? Well, I'll say that there um, are some policies that Trump did put in place that impacted all of us positively. Um, but, you know, that's why we have primary elections. You know, we're going to let the voters decide who is going to be our nominee for president. So, like you mentioned, DeSantis, you mentioned, you know, other people that are going to possibly run against him, and we'll let the voters decide. You don't quite see everybody going over the cliff like Webbings as they used to, though, <laughs> we were expecting. All right, we appreciate your time. Good to have you in on the political panel. We're going to have you back real soon.